time now for our weekly news segment. All right, Tony. All right, once again, let me know if you want to come on if you're in the backstage. We got people coming in from all over the world today. All over the world. Okay, so actually, Alaskanon said that um, there are still a bunch of donations that are on chain, but not on the page yet. But he is fully funded. So I guess Andres is fully funded as of now. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's almost fully yeah. funded. But um, yeah, so let's get into the new section while we are on the topic of Kuno and poor Latin American internet. <laughs> let's discuss uh, Cuba. So uh, XMR Future posted um, a link from uh, Kuno, which said, and he wrote, let's help a fellow Monero user from Cuba route around censorship and distribute a few USB sticks in his community so they can do the same. And oh my God, this is so bright. Um, so the title says, a Cuban warrior seeking support for freedom. Hey guys, my name is Jose. I'm a student of medicine in Cuba, very interested in privacy and freedom. Uh, I'm born in Cuba 22 years ago. Maybe it's not the best place for freedom and privacy, but I love my family. Um, so basically what he's saying is that um, he has poor internet and he tried to research about Tales and Tor, but he can because these pages are blocked to download directly from the public internet controlled by the national telecommunications. Uh, the wages are low and internet restriction is very high on the island. So he plans to buy one terabyte HDD to storage uh, downloads and five 10 gigabyte USB sticks to install Tails. This allows me, he awesome. said, um, share some USB Tails pens with some friends in my community to, cre to create awareness about use internet against tracking, surveillance, and censorship. And he details all the costs. And it's That's one a great one. Yep. Yeah. So he, he's basically trying to help people get access to, to Tor so they can get on the internet anonymously and, and not get get blocked get around the, fi the firewalls essentially mm -hmm. um that's that's really cool yeah but uh who is the guy do, do we have a name of the person doing uh, this jose one? just jose. jose yeah jose if you're if you're out there uh jump on the show next week have you on you can tell us all about it sure yeah, well, can, can you imagine if this actually grows from him and his friends to i mean not the whole country but a good amount that'll be insane um, but he also wrote, help me to create awareness about use internet against tracking, surveillance, and censorship living in dictatorship, which is still happening in, in Cuba, So, which is very sad. Wait a second. Is he in the U.S.? Because if not, then I can't see how he would jump on the show. Until he gets this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good, good point. Yeah, that's... I don't know. That's a very good point. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think we've had anybody call it like on the show from from cuba right uh i don't think we've had that yet oh i don't think so but that'll be cool if jose could hop on uh, that'd be... figure that out. as long as he you know stays safe doesn't put himself in danger uh right. that'd be super cool the the border um of cuba on the water is allegedly i'm not saying anyone should do anything sketchy but it should theoretically be close enough to use a microwave antenna just saying that's true <laughs> <laughs> it's the next fun raise <laughs> microwave yeah um yeah but let's move on uh, the next article so uh, untraceable said if you can code check out bounties monero social and earn some cash so let's open the link and essentially if you if you can code go on monero bounties and uh, there's a lot of bounties for you um the first one is nostra client for monero there's big projects such as this one there are smaller ones you can get 7.4 uh moneros for this one um then we have two fish addition to monero 0 0.8 so if you do have any skills and you do find something that you can help with um then please please do even cake wallet um i think i think this is from cake wallet um they need help and they'll pay you 1.7 monero to do so so if you have any skills uh, go ahead and um and hop on and also if you want to be the operation manager of cake labs they are hiring uh, and they wrote this is a unique opportunity to help set the strategic uh, direction of uh, the cake wallet so for more info they wrote a whole post on reddit about um the pay and what responsibilities you will have in in the um, in the job 
Yeah, that that looks like an amazing opportunity for somebody to really take a leadership role at Cake. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out, people. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people applying to that. Um, wow, so many things. Uh, what was the, the the? I'm sorry, Tony. The website yeah. before what what is it? What is the uh, URL for the bounties? Oh, oh uh, it's called bounties social. Yeah, I mean, here just another example. We're seeing so much action right now in in Monero in terms of community participation. It's it's getting hard to keep up with things. All these Kuno fundraisers, um, these bounties that are going up. It's it's actually hard to believe, right? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think we would be the, this far at this point, to be honest. So it's, just it's to nice. just to throw it out there for the average listener, people like myself who coding makes you want to claw your eyes out. Don't <laughs> forget that these things are funded from someone somewhere. You can pledge pledge your your treasure or your time in a lot of these things, and it goes really really far. Um, because the people who do all of this coding, they got to eat, and you would be amazed at how. A couple hundred bucks in a in an envelope or something like that can really get a lot of these projects knocked out. So um, yeah. you can contribute to these bounties as well financially, or you can contribute your time to just make people that you know in your life aware that they even exist. Yeah, so, have, have, we, have we seen um, some successful bounties funded here? Have there been any any big ones? Mm. Doug, you're yeah, averaging two a sure. week on your show right now. <laughs> uh, for sure, because this this website is actually pretty old. I think it's because I I, I I think I was on it last year or something. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, for yeah, sure. And, yeah, I'm curious how, how it's been doing. Uh, fantastic. All right, well, we'll have to keep we'll have to keep bringing that that up throughout. Uh, Tony, keep bringing that one up in the future. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it has a lot of cool stuff. And the thing is, yeah. uh, they also update the bounty as well. Uh, like the initial one uh, was increased by 0 0.1, then 0 0.03, then 0 0.03 again. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, now let's see. All right, someone donated 0 0.1 Monero. Cool. <laughs> so we're getting closer and closer to the 6 Monero goal for, uh, for Andreas. Uh, okay, so now let's watch a video of, of um, U.S. President Biden saying that he has been to every mass shooting. After every mass shooting, we hear a simple message. The same message all over the country. I've been to every mass shooting. Do something. <laughs> so, okay, so why am I showing this, <laughs> this video? So according to Biden, he's been to every single mass shooting. He's also been there on the day of 9-11, I think the day of or the day after when it happened. Uh, and the comment section is kind of funny. Uh, I feel bad for him at this point. Uh, and he survived. What's his diagnosis? He's losing it. This guy pretends to be omniscient and omnipresent. He's been in every single event. I wouldn't be surprised if the next thing he says is that he's been on a boat with Christopher Columbus discovering America. <laughs> what is uh, the emotional oh, expression on his face right now? Can anybody tell me what that expression yeah. is? <laughs> Diarrhea, I think. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so he's losing it. Um, he changed his diaper. You know those old man Muppets, the like the grumpy guys up in the up in the balcony, and they're just talking a bunch of shit. Like he looks like those old Muppet guys. From does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, and yeah, yeah. But uh, I think so he's running again. Oh, it's it's crazy. And if he if he somehow wins again, and this doesn't mean that. You know, I want a specific person to win, or you know, uh, but if he, if he specifically wins again, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't think he will. But there's just there's just no way that he wants it as yeah. a person. I mean, there's just he's he's like it's cruel and un, like a un, cruel punishment. Yeah. It's like keeping he, this guy. If he wins, if he wins, it's clearly uh, it's clearly the deep state because there's no way that he could win on his own. Well, do we yeah. really think that he won to begin with? 
Ooh, Most likely. Funny. I mean, imagine he wins and then he makes this face. Not again. <laughs> Don't get another show banned, Tux. Yeah, let's <laughs> yeah. Well, he, 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 he already, already got, got, we're all he already that got it. speech banned. He already got it banned because he criticized the Vax earlier. So it, it's already been banned. He can't. Uh, <laughs> it's already going to be late. banned. We're going to lose this channel any, any day now, guys. Yeah, <laughs> any day now. Let's move on. Let's go to Odyssey, everybody. <laughs> We we got to or controversial things that we support here on the show. <laughs> we gotta move to Spotify for the next episode. That might be better. Yeah. Like Joe Rogan. Um, so now let's discuss uh, Liberland. So I'm gonna tell you a quick description of Liberland, and then we're gonna play this video of President uh, Vit Jedlitska. I think that's how you pronounce his name. We we, ha we had them on the show, by the way. Uh, we met them in Prague at Minerocon. Uh, one of the guys who help start Liberland was on the show explaining it. Uh, I'm an, I'm an e-citizen of there. Which is crazy. So basically You're... I'm an, uh, an e-citizen. They gave like they, they, they um you pay for citizenship and you get like an ID card and access to like some some actual citizen benefits that you you can't get otherwise. So awesome. I have like I have like an actual ID card from there and shit like that. So you're Actually, a yeah. citizen to Liberland. Yeah. Tell, tell us all about it. Tell, actually, give us give us the quick take. Since you, yeah, what what is Liberland? Uh, Liberland is a uh, re the republic, and it's between Serbia and Croatia in this little no man's land that uh, nobody wanted since like the 1990s and the breakup of uh, some. I think it was the Soviet, not Soviet Union, but like there was a big thing and they broke it up. And mm -hmm. there's this piece of land that nobody wanted. They've actually started settling it. I think physically, they um, they crossed the border, and I believe they're actually in the process of starting to build now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess Tony, that's the story, right? That's because yeah. something happened, right? They've they've been attacked. Yeah. So uh, let's actually play the video from uh, the president itself of Liberland. Um, but Tugs, that actually makes you a dual citizen. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so let's play this video. It's like one minute. Dear Liberlanders and free citizens of the world, Liberland is facing unprecedented attack by Croatian authorities. Yesterday, a group of Croatian policemen and people from the forestry came and confiscated all personal property on territory of Liberland. They have also brutally destroyed all our buildings, including the building for Liberland security. We are calling on international community as well as on Croatian politicians and Croatian institutions to stop this madness. It is unnecessary, unprovoked act of violence against our peaceful nation, against our borders and against our sovereignty. We hope this is the last incident in our long lasting relations. And we are announcing the construction of hotel, new marina project, as well as a huge adventure park in the center of Liberland. We were expecting this, but we didn't expect that you guys are coming without any paperwork and that you are coming in such a brutal manner. Let's look into bright future together, Croatia and Liberland, and let's build a better future together. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to host you in Liberland soon. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Uh, the Croatian, I guess, government just sent police uh, to attack Liberland, which, you know, it's a peaceful nation. Like, they haven't done anything other than promoting liberty. And, um, yeah, so it's insane. <laughs> I hope it's not going to happen again. But if it does, Liberland might need to become gunland to protect to protect itself from, uh, from them. You know that meme about, like... Oh, if you don't like it, start your own social media. If you don't like it, start your own bank. If you don't like it, start your own country. Country, and yeah. The, and then if you don't like, and it's like the it, the the farther you follow this chain of events down, the more overt it gets. But the the real beauty of all of it is, it uh it eliminates that that. Sorry about that. It eliminates the uh, ability to hide the actual intentions of the authoritarians. Right. I reached yeah. out to the guy we interviewed at Monerocon. Uh, maybe we'll get him to jump on at some point. Yeah, that'll be awesome if you can, especially after what happened. Um, 
it'll be cool to get more information from from him but if anybody from the official government of croatia is watching this video stop attacking attacking liberland and leave them alone if they um, need to they can always 3d print some guns yeah they can and they, they probably should um okay so now let's get into a different topic so this is facial recognition to board a plane in houston um, i'm not gonna play the whole the whole video uh but essentially um okay, let's play the video this part so essentially you scan your face and then you are ready to go and i've done those stuff before because they have it all over germany in all the airports mm -hmm. and um you scan your passport in my case and then also your face and then you're good to go um which is very mm, crazy honestly and you can bypass it because you have to you have to scan your passport and then you have to go for that as well if you want to go board your plane so you have to do it you can't just you know um bypass it so it's very isn't, unfortunate isn't there already a thing for facial recognition called like clear or something in airports is that what this is or is this something different i think it's called clear yeah there's clear it's, there's a couple of uh, there's i think there's two of them i don't know what this one is but like, yeah. it's, it's, it's coming it's coming to an air, you know an airport country near you it's it's everywhere it's global it's happening it's, they're normalizing it I've been to three airports in Germany, Berlin, Munich, Frankfurt, and they all have it. So I think it's all oh, over yeah. Germany, at least. Uh, on my way to Mexico, they, they did that. I'm on the Delta. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, in the U.S. <laughs> you should have put an anonymous mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I, I mean, I would have tried to refuse, but it happened so quickly, I didn't have a chance. Now, the dumb thing is, is that, at least with Clear, you have to pay a subscription fee to be part of clear so not only do you get your face scanned but you get the permission to give them freaking i think it's like 50 or 100 bucks a year to have this service that lets you get through lines faster yeah well, it's, it's like anything else right Crazy. it's they they sell it as more convenient and you inevitably lose it's like privacy. that tsa yeah. quick pass thing whatever that's called right yeah that's what he's talking about yeah exactly oh that's what you're talking about okay yeah, there's different versions of that. Clear is one of them. Uh, it's, yeah. At least if it wasn't forced, I mean, that's bad still, but at least if you weren't forced, like if you really wanted to, you can pay, but if you don't want to be part of it, that's okay. But in Germany, I think you just, I don't think you can get past, I may be wrong, but I think you can get past through it unless you show your face. So, yeah, uh, it's, um, it's very unfortunate. Now, let's play this video as well. And then... Yes. It's kind of funny, so uh, it's just 30 seconds. You're still wearing your engagement ring, huh? Yeah. Yeah? I'm, I'm going to give it back to him. Do you want it now? Sure. I mean, I... Don't give it back. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not going to keep it. Right. Yeah. Thank you, that's a Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm not sure if this is true. <laughs> But imagine, like, if you said, thank you, that's 150 Monero right there. Right, <laughs> instead, right. instead of Bitcoin. But I'm not sure if this is actually true. If, if this is actually true, that's that's pretty badass, honestly. Even if it, he, he said Bitcoin instead of uh, Monero, that's still pretty badass. We're, get, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Um, so 95% of the NFT market, as we all know, is now worthless, new report shows. Um, and it just it's just very sad that so much money like millions tens of millions maybe hundreds of millions of dollars went into these nfts which they could have been into into monero instead not not that nft is a bad thing but people turn nfts into apes and monkeys and bananas and all, all this stuff which have no inherent value instead of you know being redirected to something like monero so yeah and 95 percent of them are now worthless which is not shocking. <laughs> I am not surprised at all. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Luckily, I don't own any of us. Now, even more depressing. Uh, in the <laughs> in the forty eight hours since U.S. debt has increased by forty seven billion dollars. That's one billion in new debt every hour. So every single hour, hour that passes, the U.S. adds a billion more dollars to the debt, which is well, crazy. It's a lot. 
Um, so we, we're adding, adding trillions in no time. Um, for those keeping tabs, the US added 1 trillion in debt in three months. So yeah, I guess every three months you get one more trillion added to the debt, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, Just can't even fathom. Now, if you, if a state secedes from the United States, like New Hampshire and Texas really want to, the if they do so and they succeed, they are not responsible for the U.S. debt because there's something in international law that says that uh, a, a place that secedes from a, a bigger place is not responsible for that larger place's debt. What if all states? I mean, you can. What if all states do that? <laughs> then I guess the only person responsible or the only entity responsible for the debt would be DC itself. Because when they say the United States, right. like they're really talking about DC. Uh, mm -hmm. When they talk about the United States of America, they're talking about all 50 states. But if mm -hmm. the United States debt is 50 or whatever trillion dollars, then that would mean that DC is responsible for paying it only. When when you take out collateral with a U.S. debt bond, it's actually classified as a corporate bond. Uh, they they pretend to be a sovereign bond, but it is actually a corporate bond that's that's done in D.C. So it's I mean they they openly admit that it's not a sovereign bond when you use it for collateral. Hmm. Yeah. But it's such a it's such a large amount of money. I think Apple is just worth two trillion. And that's it not. actually makes up about one third of the average taxpayer's uh, hourly income. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a that's a large amount of money. I think. Uh, that's, and I'm, I mean the rate of increase. Like for every hour you work, a third of it is just fresh debt. It's not even the interest. It's just the new debt. That's such. A, that's a large amount. Um, but we'll be, also, we'll be Venezuela soon. Yeah, so, <laughs> that would really be very bad. Um, but essentially, um, the monetary and fiscal policy of the U.S. In one sentence, they printed eight trillion, gave you fourteen hundred per month, and sent the rest to their friends, and left you with inflation. <laughs> And someone said we and we had to pay back the fourteen hundred come tax season, which is the biggest mm -hmm. damn scam. <laughs> yeah, the inflation has just been astronomical. It was, but it was well orchestrated. Um, so the last three things that I'm gonna bring up for this week's uh, news is um, some CBDC news. The first is on uh, Kazakhstan, so they established regulatory agency to implement CBDC. So the National Bank of Kazakhstan (NBK) has established a separate entity to themselves to lead the development and implementation of the country's CBDC, the digital uh, tench. According to an official statement on September 15th, the National Payment Corporation, NPC, is a reorganization of the Kazakhstan Center of Inner Bag Settlements. And essentially, the NPC will be also be responsible for the development of digital financial infrastructure, including the implementation of the digital tench. And... Um, they have a launch deadline set for 2025. So a lot of countries have this 2025 deadline for their CBDCs. Kazakhstan is one of them. They actually work with um, with Binance as well. And meanwhile, in the U.S., it's kind of interesting the turn that we are um, having currently. The U.S. anti-CBDC bill moves a step closer to passing. So the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act aimed at preventing a Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital currency, has passed the House Financial Services Committee. The CBDC Anti-Surveillance Act, State Act, aimed at preventing unelected bureaucrats in Washington from issuing a, a CBDC, has taken one step further on its procedural journey after it passed the House Financial um, Services Committee. And last week, we talked about Tom Emmer. We talked about in the past um, about Jeff Kay. Uh, but essentially, Emmer said that American values, American values, this is what the future global digital economy needs, if not open, permissionless, and private, just like cash, or Monero. <laughs> a CBDC is nothing more than CCP, which is a Chinese Communist Party style surveillance tool that we can that can be weaponized to oppress the American way of life. And of course, that it's going to uh, to be used in, in such ways. And um Emmer and 49 original co-sponsors reintroduced the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act. 
And also, Emmer stressed that the bill has already gained the support of 60 member of co- members of Congress, which is a good amount. 60 is a good, good amount of people. So uh, it's not just Tom Emmer's and um, JFK and then uh, Robert Kennedy. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thought about something else. Um, that are supporting this, that there's 60 other members as well, and maybe even even more. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, it's very good to hear. And now redefining money, America's digital currency dilemma. Uh, as the U.S. House, uh, United States House Financial Services Committee looks to further impede the introduction of the digital dollar, where does this resistance to a CBDC stem from? Um, they talked about DeSantis, uh, Kennedy, them running for presidency, and how a CBDC will never happen under their administration, and that uh, they don't want it. And that um, on Wednesday, September 20th, which is just a couple of days ago, the United States House uh, Financial Services Committee marked up two bills to curb the issuance of a CBDC. One of the bills would stop the Federal Reserve from running any test programs on CBDCs without congressional approval, so they would need approval to run any more tests while the other would stop federal banks from using CBDCs for some services and, and products. And um, they discussed that, and as we all know, and we discussed in the past, more than 130 countries were at some stage of research into, into a CBDC, so a lot of countries want CBDCs. Uh, eight had rejected the idea, right? Um, and the US is kind of battling between wanting CBDCs, not wanting CBDCs at a very high level. Um, so yeah, CBDC would mean that the Federal Reserve would effectively oversee all the bank transfers in the country as there will be no alternative and importantly, and having everything under one roof means one mistake or failure would affect everyone rather than be limited to one bank, for instance. So it would be a huge, huge, um, change. And then one more thing, President Joseph Biden, of course, said his administration would place the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a United States CBDC. So got a big yeah. war going on. We can count, we can count on Biden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um and they talk about privacy, right? Yeah, they talk about privacy and um they talk about Project Hamilton and um which is from Federal Reserves and they study it, it studied the viability of a CBDC and uh, how it got to process 1.7 million transactions per second, light years ahead of the Bitcoin blockchain, and quicker even than Visa, which can deal about 65 transactions per second. But even if you have a lot of transactions per second, that's, it's hard to have high transaction amount, decentralization and privacy and all this stuff. So they just have a lot of transactions per second. It's not decentralized, it's centralized, and you also don't have privacy. So. Of course, like other projects in the crypto space, you can have 10 billion transactions per second and uh, not have the other important uh, factors. And, but yeah. And I, I guess the article is concluding that, uh, you know, CBDC development in the US does seem to have stymied given. Yes, it did. Yeah, it did mention that. Yeah, it did. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good news, right? Uh, for whatever <laughs> reason, crazy. people people are waking up to that, which is which is great. It's good. For, and it's ultimately good for for digital cash for Monero, right? It's opening up people's eyes to this need for for true digital cash. People are realizing the importance of that. That's why. Well, what if, uh, or, or you can open up an account at NPC Bank in Kazakhstan. <laughs> it's literally called <laughs> NPC. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, could they be a more living meme of the absolute absurdity of clown world right now? <laughs> national payment corporation yeah yeah but it's what if we, we are not gonna have a cbdc in in the us and then we're gonna have the digital euro that's gonna be crazy because there's such two big entities uh so it's gonna be interesting if we're not gonna have cbdc's that's awesome on. yeah and uh yeah. we shall see i'm sure we'll, we will have them we will have them eventually here in the us still be because they're gonna have to compete like you said they're gonna have to compete with the with other countries here that are that are trying to create something. I'm going to be quick because I really want to hear from Spackle. But yeah, let's get I Spackle. would point out that actually not adopting a CBDC and also having a history of being a reserve currency would put the U.S. in a way better position for competing with the world, not the other way around. 
Um, and I'd like to also point out that all these people that got this, these ill-gotten gains from their connections to like Raytheon and Blackwater and all that other stuff, they're like terrified that all of their money is going to be on chain and they're going to be able to shut these people down. Most of the people that are fighting against the CBDC, it's probably because it would be so easy for them to be compromised if their money was no longer secure. And even all we really need to do is send them a Monero pamphlet and be like, bro, your <laughs> ill-gotten gains are safe with us, man. Don't worry about it. The government has to have somewhere to launder their money. Um, black budgets and stuff like that can't exist without uh, some sort of privacy. And therefore, um, there's got to be some way of keeping money private and a CBDC wouldn't allow it. 